Hey everyone, I'm Eric, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up Streamlabs desktop step by step. By the end, you'll have a fully operational streaming setup ready to go live and impress your audience. So without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, before even opening Streamlabs desktop, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're familiar with the dashboard on our website. You can almost think of the dashboard like your control center. Here you'll find analytics from your previous streams, an overview of your recent events. You can customize your alerts from here, browse overlays, manage your cloud bot chat moderation, and so much more. Now, a lot of the stuff I mentioned can be controlled from within Streamlabs desktop as well, but it's a little easier to navigate on our website. Plus, you can also access a ton of cool features like a free merch store tool, create a custom website, set up a tip page, join our all-stars community to receive special prizes and so much more so definitely make sure that you check it out at streamlabs.com once you familiarize yourself with the website it's time to download and install streamlabs desktop you can easily find the download link right here on the dashboard once the file's downloaded open it and follow the prompts to complete the installation process this usually only takes a few minutes when you install streamlabs desktop for the first time we'll take you through an onboarding process where you can sign in connect a platform add your microphone and webcam and add pre-made overlay templates let's go ahead and click on start fresh create a login and now you can pick your webcam and microphone now that you've gone through the onboarding you'll see something that looks like this you're probably asking yourself at this point, where am I supposed to start? But I promise that once you understand what is what and where everything is, it's going to be a breeze. You'll want to focus on your scenes and sources right here. Think of a scene as a canvas where you can arrange different elements for your stream. Each scene can represent a different layout or segment of your live stream. For example, you might have one scene for your gaming sessions, another for chatting with your audience, and another for displaying your webcam feed. In this example right now, this is just called scene. But let's say I want this to be the scene I want people to see when I'm playing games. What I can do is go in and right click rename and call it something like gaming scene. Now we're going to focus on sources. Sources are the individual elements that you can add to your scenes. Sources can include video feeds from your camera or a game, images like logos, text, alerts, and more. Sources are like the building blocks that create the visual and interactive experience for your viewers. Since this is the scene I want to use when I play games, there are a few ways I can set this up, but here's what a basic configuration would look like. Click on that plus sign next to sources and you'll see all the things you can add to your scene. In this case, we want to add game capture as a source. So go ahead and click on it and feel free to leave it on auto, which should automatically capture your game whenever you start it up. Now click close and you'll see the game capture source included here. We'll also want to capture my webcam, so click that plus sign again and click on video capture. You can name it whatever you want and then click on the cam device from the drop down here and click close. Now you can see my camera is included in the scene right here. And lastly, you'll want to include an alert box source so that when people follow, tip, or sub to you, an alert appears on the screen which will help you thank your viewers. We'll get into how you can customize your alerts a bit later in the video, but for now this is your basic setup for a go live scene. One thing that's important for you to note for your sources is that these act as layers. So for this example, my alert box is on top of my webcam and game capture, meaning my alerts will appear on top of those sources on my screen. If I move my alert box below my game capture, my viewers will no longer be able to see my alerts, so just keep that in mind as you're adding sources. Now we're going to shift focus over to the audio mixer. This is relatively straightforward. You'll just want to click that settings cog wheel, click on the drop down for your mic, and ensure the correct device is selected. For audio monitoring, you'll want monitor and output selected to ensure that your audio is making it onto your stream. Now let's get into some of the most important settings you can change to ensure your stream quality looks great. A lot of these settings can change depending on how powerful your computer is, but for now we're going to optimize these settings and ensure that our stream can run efficiently at 720p and 30fps. Generally, this is a good middle ground to ensure your stream quality looks good for your viewers while making sure your computer has enough resources to run your game. Luckily, Twitch is a handy guide for their recommended settings, which we'll link down in the description below. We're also using an NVIDIA graphics card, but if you're using AMD, definitely check out that link because a few of your settings are going to look somewhat different. For streaming at 720p and 30fps, we're going to go into the settings in Streamlabs desktop right here, go into video, change to advanced mode. First, we're going to change the resolution. You can leave the base canvas resolution as your computer's native resolution, but let's go in and change the output resolution to be 1280 by 720. This will be the quality your viewers see. If you see your computer screen getting cut off in Streamlabs desktop, just go ahead and right click on the screen, click on transform and hit fit to screen. Now let's get to bitrate. A higher bitrate takes up more of your available internet bandwidth. Increasing your bitrate can improve your video quality, but only up to a certain point. 
For our stream, we're going to adjust this to 3000 kbps. If you have good enough internet and want to bump the quality, you can try 4500 or 6000 here, but for a stream of 720p and 30fps, 3000 for the bitrate should generally be fine. For rate control, go ahead and leave this on CBR. For the preset, leave it on medium quality, and for keyframe interval, you can do two, and for max B frames, you can also do two. Next, let's go into video settings here and change the frame rate to 30fps. At this point, you're pretty much ready to go live if you want, just hit that green go live button, enter your stream information, and you're good to go. And if you want to record yourself, you don't have to go live, you can just hit that red record button right here to save a video. But before we go live, we're actually going to want to go a bit deeper and show you how to customize your alerts and add some different widgets. I've already shown you how to add alerts, but let's go in now and show you how you can customize what these will look and sound like. Again, you can do this from within Streamlabs desktop by right-clicking your alert box source and clicking on properties which will allow you to change things like the alert image, sound, and layout, but this is a little easier to do within that dashboard I mentioned earlier, so let's go ahead and go back to the website to show you how to do it there. Once you're within the dashboard, go ahead and click on alert box from the streaming essentials tab here. You should see all the platforms you've connected with and the various alerts you can customize for each one. If you haven't connected a platform yet, you can just go into your account settings, click on platforms, and do that there. Now, back to the alert box. We're just going to focus on editing Twitch followers for now. You can see Twitch is the platform on the left side here, and right now, followers is highlighted, so that's the alert I'm customizing. You can upload your own media, which is an image or GIF that will appear on the screen whenever someone follows you. You can also easily change the alert sounds and mess with other settings like alert delay, duration, animations, and a few other things. Once you've customized this to your liking, you can test by clicking on this button right here and it will automatically send the alert to Streamlabs desktop so you can adjust the position and confirm that it looks the way that you want it to. Once you're done customizing your alert, just click save settings and you're all set. You can repeat that process for any other alerts you want to customize like subscriptions, tips, and more. In case you have no idea what you want your alerts to be, we also offer a ton of pre-made alerts that you can choose from and look awesome. If you just click on themes here, we'll take you to our library that has thousands of pre-made alerts. Some of the professionally made ones do require a Streamlabs Ultra subscription, but you can type in free and some free ones will appear. Just pick the one that you like, click select and install, choose which ones you want and hit install. And boom, you have super awesome looking alerts in no time. If you want to switch this out, you can always go back to the alert box dashboard and click on this drop down to switch between themes. This is honestly just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to alerts. There's a ton of advanced functionality here, but for beginner streamers, this should get you started in the right direction. If you do want to learn more about all the things you can do with alerts, I'm gonna link an article down below for you to check out with a ton of great information. Now we're going to add a widget. Widgets are fun interactive elements that keep your audience engaged and there's a ton of different widgets you can pick from. We have a tip jar, an event list that will display all your followers and subs and things like that on screen. You can add different goals, you can add a spin wheel or an emote wall, you can use chat highlight to showcase a specific comment. There's so much you can do here, so definitely take a look through all of these. But the good news is that adding these to your stream works pretty much the same way across all of them. So as an example, let's click on the widgets tab here and choose chat box, which will display all of your chats on screen. Click on add source and name it whatever you want. We'll just leave it as chat box. And now you can customize the way it looks, change the delay, disable the animations or platform icons if you want, and then hit close. And now you can see the chat box has been added as a source. Now again, you can right click and click on properties to get back into the settings from Streamlabs desktop, but you can always find them on our website and dashboard as well. Now, let's get into overlays. Overlays are graphic elements that are added on top of your gameplay, webcam feed, and other content while streaming. They also come with cool transitions when you switch scenes, and overall add a really awesome professional looking touch to your content. This works very similarly to alerts where you can just browse our library, find one you want, click install, and you're ready to go. Some of these overlays require our Streamlabs Ultra subscription, which helps us pay the designers who built these, but you can find free ones again by typing free in the search bar here. So let's go ahead and choose this Streamlabs neon overlay. Click on install, open Streamlabs desktop, click install again, and boom, your whole stream is set up, including scenes and sources and it even comes with these awesome transitions when you switch between scenes. Now that your basic stream is set up and ready to go, we definitely recommend doing a couple of test streams to something other than your main Twitch channel to review video footage just to make sure everything's set up the way that you want and to make the adjustments as needed. But after that, you're ready to start streaming. If you ever run into any issues, our technical support staff can assist you. So feel free to reach out to us on the Streamlabs Discord or create a ticket at streamlabs.com support. I'll leave a link down below for that as well. But that's it. And remember, anyone can be a streamer with the help of Streamlabs Desktop. Happy streaming.